What's up everyone? In this video, we're talking all about SharePoint. We're gonna show how we can use SharePoint list formatting to customize the command bar in our SharePoint or Microsoft list. We can use this new functionality to show and hide different objects in the command bar, as well as change the text that displays. I'll show you how it works right after this. Let's look at what I mean by customizing the command bar. Here I have my SharePoint travel request list open. The command bar is this panel right here where we have our new edit and grid, share, and all of these different buttons. So in addition to all these buttons that we have in the command bar, you'll see we have three dots that we can click. And this gives us some additional hidden from your view commands that we can use. So there are a few things that we can do with this new SharePoint list formatting capability. And if you haven't watched any of my videos that I've did previously on SharePoint list formatting, I'll summarize it really quick. This travel request list that I'm looking at is actually using one of the Microsoft list templates. And you'll notice that we have some color coding going on here. So on this airline column, for example, we have some color coding based off of who the carrier is. This is all done using SharePoint list formatting. And what it does is it gives us a way to override the look and feel of a particular column or an entire view and even forms and now the command bar. How it does this, if we look at this column, for example, and click on the drop down, go to column settings and format this column, you'll see we have some out of the box options to do some of this formatting. So these give us a point and click way to configure some of these color coding and different styles for a column. But we can also go to advanced mode and this shows us the behind the scenes of how it functions and it uses JSON, JavaScript object notation, to give you a way to be able to customize the styling, so the HTML and CSS, of a particular column in this case. So we can use this same concept of taking this JSON and applying that to the command bar. So what can we do with the command bar? We don't have quite as much functionality as we do say in a column or in a view format, but we can do a few things. One, we can completely hide a particular command. So if I didn't want my users using the grid view functionality, which turns this into an Excel like editable table, I could completely hide the edit and grid view button. Or maybe I just didn't want the edit and grid view to be in plain sight. Maybe I wanted to show in this kind of hidden off screen panel that you have to click the three dots to get to. I can move that to that different section as well. And on some of these buttons, I can also customize the text that shows. So those are the customizations that we can do. So how do we apply this formatting? Well, we're gonna do this on the view itself. So if you need to customize this for several views, you will have to go into each view and put in a view format to be able to do your conditional formatting and your logic to show and hide or move these different objects in the command bar. So to get to that, we're going to find our view button. So right now I'm in the all items view. So if I click on that drop down. For this particular view, we'll see that we have an option to format current view. So here are those out of the box stylings that we have for the view. So if you haven't looked at this before, we have an alternating row style that's easy to apply that helps you view lots of items in a list easily. But what we want is this advanced mode option so we can get that text editor to paste in some JSON. So there's a special property that we'll put into our JSON to be able to customize that command bar. So what I'll do is we have some formatting applied right now to the view to do the alternating row style. So I'm going to find this additional row class and I'm going to go after that and we want to add in something else here. So we want to use a property called command bar props. And you'll see that as I start typing the word command, it has IntelliSense built in. So it's knowing that there's a property called command bar props so I can just do a tab and it will autofill that with the syntax needed to be able to fill out this section and customize the command bar. So now that I have that, I need to put in another property called commands. So these are the commands that I want to customize for the command bar properties. So this will allow me to put in multiple settings for the different objects in the command bar. And what we need to do is first define a key. And the key is just telling it which object in the command bar we want to customize. So in quotes, I'll type key and do a colon. And now when I do that, you see we have the IntelliSense showing again, and this is showing me all of the different things in that command bar that I can customize. So if we just scroll down here, I mentioned edit and grid view before. 
So we can select the edit and grid view option here from the list and do a tab to auto fill that in as my key. Now that we have the object that we want to target, we need to tell it what we want to have happen. So like I said before, we can either completely hide this, we can change the text of how it displays, or we can move it to that hidden subscreen. So to tell it what we want to have happen, I'm going to do a comma. And let's start with the straight hide from view scenario. So to do that, all we have to do is use the hide property. So in double quotes here, we'll type the word hide and do a colon. And then with the IntelliSense, you see this is just a true or false value. So if I want to hide it, I would actually set this to true. So it can be as simple as that. And one of the things that I like about this list formatting capability is if you're not sure if something's gonna work and you don't wanna mess with your live list, we have a preview function here. So I can click this preview button and it will apply the formatting that you have, but only for you to see, not for everyone else. So I can see as soon as I clicked preview, my edit and grid view button went away. So I can be assured that that formatting worked and I can save to apply it for everyone else using the list. Now at this point, anyone else that has access to list will see the edit and grid view button hidden. Now let's keep building on this capability. So we'll take a look at customizing another one of these buttons. We're gonna go back into our view by clicking on the all items dropdown and selecting format current view. And we'll go back to the section where we're putting in the custom command bar properties. And we'll do a new one simply by going after the last squiggly bracket and doing a comma and doing another open and close squiggly bracket. Now here we'll define a separate key by doing the key property and colon. And we'll scroll through all the different properties that we can configure again. Now say maybe we didn't want to have the export button so visible. So maybe we still wanna give people the option to export to CSV, but we didn't want it visible here and maybe shown in this section that's a little bit more hidden. So to do that, we can first specify that export property by scrolling through here this list. And the one that we want is simply this export option. So I'll click that. And then instead of using the hide, because again, we're not hiding it, we just wanna move it to this section here with the three dots we can use a property called section type. So we're gonna do section and then on type, make sure you have a capital T. And then we'll do a colon and you see we have two options here. So it's either primary, meaning it shows here, or it's overflow. So this section where you click on the three dots is called the overflow section. And that's where we wanna move it to, so we'll select this overflow option. Now if I were to preview this right now, nothing's gonna happen. That's because we need to define one more property. So we're gonna do a comma, and we'll define the property of position and we'll set zero. So we can't move something into the overflow unless we specify a position. Now, if we click preview, we'll see that export CSV button went away. But if I click on our overflow on the three dots here, we'll see that it was simply moved over to that menu. And if I wanna change the order in which it shows in this menu, I just change the value of my position. So if I want it to be last, I will change that to three instead of zero. And now we see that being pushed to the bottom of our overflow menu. And now let's see how we can customize the text that shows in one of these buttons. So we'll add another condition. We'll define a key. And this time, let's target that new button. We'll select the new option from the list and we'll type text to get the text property. So here I can simply put in whatever I want the text to be. So maybe instead of new, I wanna say add new request. Now if I click preview on that, you see my button value just changed. So instead of saying new, it has that custom text that I just passed in. So I know these are all really small things, but it's something that we couldn't do before without custom code, but now we can easily do by just putting in a little bit of JSON. And it just really goes to help our user experience. Now, one of the other cool things about this capability is it can really help us when we're building Power Platform solutions with SharePoint List as our data repository. So a common example of this would be maybe I'm using a SharePoint list as the backend for one of my Power Apps Canvas applications. And maybe I don't want people being able to come to the list directly and add or edit items. I wanna force them to go and do all of that inside of my app. Well, we could easily use this new capability to be able to customize the command bar to hide the new and the edits and the edit and grid view buttons so that they can't easily add new items into this list. So we can target the new item and instead of changing the text, we can use our hide property and set that to true. 
And now the user doesn't have any way to be able to click a button to add a new item into this list. Now, it is important to note though that this isn't a replacement for security. As I said, this is dependent on each view. So if I were to switch to a different view like this grouped by approval status, I will see the new button here. So I have to make sure that I'm applying this list formatting styling to every single view to make sure that users don't have a way to go around it. And of course, there's the caveat that if they have the necessary permissions to create views, users could always go create a separate view and get access to that new button. So although it's not a replacement for permissions, it can help to at least obfuscate some of these things to make it not so easy for users to be able to go and add new items into your backend list. Same thing goes for this automate button. So one of the things that we can do with SharePoint list formatting is say execute a flow directly from a particular column rather than having to rely on this automate process. So maybe we want to hide the automate button from the command bar and force them to use our column instead. So that's really all there is to it. Now, all this JSON that I showed you today to be able to manipulate the command bar is available on the SharePoint list formatting PNP GitHub repo. So there's a sample here called Command Bar Hide Automate that shows some of that show hide capability, which I just demoed. So you can always reference that if you need a reminder of how the syntax works. So give it a try, let me know what you think, and drop a note in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.